welcome to December 10th, 2021, nearing the end of the year. I'm going to jump right into it. So this week, we had uh, a really nice piece from the generalist go live. Uh, it was titled Levels, a Cultural Anomaly. Um, really enjoyed reading through this. It was, it's just a nice narrative structure, and I think it's going to be an amazing resource for why and how we work um, that we can share with potential candidates and, and other folks who are getting familiar with levels from the beginning. Um, related or similar, the Verge article from last week produced a 14% conversion rate, which is pretty staggering uh, for a piece like this. I, I don't know what to make of that, um, but pretty awesome stuff. Whole new level, we just launched our 50th episode and we just simultaneously hit uh, 50,000 plus downloads. So pretty cool uh, synergy there. Big week for potential affiliates and VIPs. You're gonna see a ton of people on this page who um, you may or may not recognize the names, but a lot of them have significant reach. So uh, nice week for uh, broadcast. We had some preliminary results. This is just a discussion. Um, nothing's been published yet, but from one of our sponsored research programs, which showed a, a really significant effect on fatty liver deposits in the levels cohort versus the control, which is super cool. It's not, um, it's not unexpected, frankly, but it was the, the largest effect that we saw so far. So it'll be cool to see some of this research start to get to the point of abstracts and publications and um, to kind of see where, where it's leading us. We have a, a big product strategy and roadmap ex exercise underway. Uh, many of you know this, Scott and Alan have been taking charge on this. It's a major focus for the past week plus. Um, deliverables are three-year product strategy, which is kind of answering where do we play, how do we win? And then 2022 roadmap, which is essentially the major initiatives and how they tie back to that core strategy. Um, so looking forward to some deliverables on that. And thanks everybody who's been participating. Launched a search for head of finance. Um, so this is gonna be a really important role to help alleviate people like Ms. who are carrying a ton of the weight and Zach, uh, just you know, lots of ongoing finance overhead that we, we've recognized we need a role for. So that just launched. If you know anybody, please recommend. Uh, and then the searches are ongoing for community manager, visual designer, assistant editor. Uh, and then let's see, in-app signup launched. So we had a product marketing email go out this week announcing the in-app signup and then uh, the app store submission as well to get us kind of into the app store and away from test flight is underway. Dialogue is, is live with Apple. Uh, so these are nice milestones. Uh, thanks, David, for, for pushing these. Some numbers from member success. So or member experience, welcome to the waitlist, best month ever. Happiness is at 99%. Again, we had a, a minor blip last week. Um, so it's really cool to see that bounce right back. Weekly orders are up 30 38% week over week. And then um, it's nice to see our replacement rates are at all time lows for two consecutive weeks. So replacements are not cheap. We provide, I think an exceptional member experience by, by covering those. And um, that said, we don't necessarily wanna see those numbers high. We wanna make sure that we're optimizing in as many ways as possible to to save cost. All right, let's see. We had some really great emails and, and just general testimonials from the community. Um, John Prenti from Miami Dolphins reached out and, and just laid out how, how much he believes in what we're doing and, and how cool it is to see the traction. And then the, the generalist article got a ton of resonance. And then we had a huge shout out to our advisors, a couple of these actually. <laughs> this one was particularly funny. Uh, a feeling when levels breaks into your home, checks the authors on your bookshelf and gets all of them as strategic advisors. Well played. Um, I, I feel similarly. And then there's some, uh, some cool visuals here. I'm going to let Alan and, uh, and Scott in their updates talk about them, but just some riffing on, first of all, the direction that tagging can go. So as we get more structured data, John's pushed structured data to V1. We've got some brainstorming going on where that can go from, from here. But just a reminder of how structured data can help people understand the significance of specific ingredients and specific meals and even products within the levels experience. So as you're kind of having these magic moments, a lot of it can be unclear and you have to really trial and error your way to an, an understanding of what's causing it. But these visuals help us understand how uh, simple structured data can, can jump to that conclusion, help you help lead you much quicker. And then some cool stuff on, uh, you know, these are just riffs, but I, I really like the direction of allowing people to share recipes and ingredient lists and potentially even, an, you know, annotated uh, recommendations to the social community around them um, about the meals they eat and why. Uh, a lot of other great connections in here. So the Stanford Engineering So Lab working on Aptimers. We've had some great conversations with them. More to come there. Sam's going to meet with them next week. Um, and just generally strong week and uh, really cool. Jumping ahead, I want to welcome uh, David Sinclair. 
many, I think all of us are very familiar with your work, um, advisor at Levels, author of Lifespan, which is required reading at Levels for people getting started, professor at Harvard Medical School and looking deeply into the future for uh, the direction that longevity is taking us. Um, I really appreciate you joining us, Dr. Sinclair, and uh, would love to just hear a few words if you don't mind. Uh, well, thanks, Josh. Well, I, I only work with companies that I believe in. Um, this is more than a job. This is uh, a passion. Um, I, it's, I was a fan of Levels uh, well before I was engaged with you guys. Uh, I mean, in fact, this is, this is not planned, but just to prove to you uh, how much I believe in it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be able to be part of this uh, revolution that you're driving. Um, wearables are a big deal. I talk about them a lot. I believe in them. I think this is the future. Uh, glucose is just the beginning. And um, I am excited to be to, to see where we can go. Um, one thing that is very clear to me is that you have um, a loyal following um, and people love the product. And that's, you know, clearly you're doing something right there. And uh, having spoken with Sam about his vision, uh, I bought in. Um, and so very happy to have uh, joined the team and um, can help in many ways. I mean, the kind of things that I think I can be helpful in are, um, well, advising in terms of, um, you know, the usual stuff, which is, you know, what what's good for us uh, health-wise. But you have plenty of advisors that can do that. What I do differently is I have the angle on longevity. I have a platform on social media, a podcast that's coming out uh, on the 5th, which uh, is sponsored by Levels. Thank you very much. That was great. Um, so I can basically recite the Levels advertising uh, off the top of my head if you want. Um, but I only support things, especially on the podcast that I believe in. And so it was uh, it was levels and athletic greens actually, uh, both of which I use daily. Um, so yeah, basically uh, it's great to be here. It's great to to see everybody today, um, and I look forward to uh, to many more uh, meetings um, and this journey that we're on. And it's just an it's also an honor to be part of the the team that you've assembled um, within the company and as the advisors. Um, and I want to give you a lot of credit for. For, for doing both of those, being a center of gravity for talent internally and externally. And so thanks, I'll stop there. I'm happy to answer any questions, by the way, uh, that you might have, but uh, otherwise, you know, thanks again for having me. Thank you. And I, I really like the center of gravity for talent framework that um, I think it's center of gravity for knowledge as well is really what we're shooting for. We want people like yourself who are very loudly and clearly articulating why uh, concepts like metabolic health matter for the, the overarching goal that many people share, which is longevity, You're living full lives um, well beyond what might currently be on the CDC's website uh, for expected lifespan. So um, yeah, we're, we're big believers in your work. Really appreciate you joining forces. And uh, I agree, glucose is literally the beginning. Yeah, I, one, one little thing that I just remembered that I w wanted to tell you is, uh, so I've been a big proponent of measuring things, especially glucose. Uh, it's very important for longevity. Um, and uh, I've actually been, at least through through direct messaging on uh, social media, attacked by um, a couple of doctors, one very vocal. Um, and if anyone has followed my career, there's nothing that gets me more excited uh, than people telling us that it cannot be done and it should not be done. So I, I love that, that we're disrupting the system. Um, and we, we literally are doing that. And I liken what we do um, and the response to it to, it's as if uh, some doctors think that we shouldn't have bathroom scales because we're not equipped to understand feedback on our own, our own body. But if, if we can use bathroom scales, we can also use glucose monitors to try and improve our health. And that's, that's my argument as to why uh, we should do this. But you're probably all aware that there are some doctors out there who think that the average person isn't qualified to know about their own body. Uh, and uh, so we're up against a few people, but I'm happy to, to join forces here and counter those arguments.
Love it. Yeah, we we certainly share that disruptive mindset. Um, it is uh, it, it, it's a prerequisite for everyone to be able to take control of their health for them to have access to the information that defines it. So we we're we're, we're really putting the cart ahead of the horse here with <laughs> with, with that paradigm. Um, love it. Thank you so much for taking your time and, and joining us. I uh, really look forward to the book club. Um, we're doing a lifespan book club. I think it's next week. So thanks for in advance for doing that. That's going to be amazing. Can't wait to join. And um, if anyone has questions for Dr. Sinclair, I think we can probably put together sort of a compiled list maybe and, and share those even uh, maybe, maybe we'll combine that with the book club effort. So um, anyway, really appreciate you taking the time. Please feel free to continue to join the, the meeting for the rest of the time. Um, runs about 90 minutes total, but I, I know you're a busy man, so no need to yeah, so what, my apologies, what happened is uh, I have a big meeting with um, Genentech for some of my labs technology, the reprogramming stuff, and it was supposed to be at 9 a.m., but they uh, didn't tell us it was Pacific time, not East Coast time, so actually I'm supposed to be on a meeting with them now, so I hope you don't mind if I drop no off problem, and get on that no. critical meeting, because that could be hundreds of millions of dollars at stake, so I think I should attend that one too, but I wanted to be here for this beginning. Thank you for joining. Um, sounds like that call is uh, is the priority. So please, uh, it's it's all for the for the science. Um, thanks again for joining. On behalf of the team, we we really love having you uh, having you here with us. And I'll see some of you next week. Absolutely. See you. Bye. Okay. Um, jumping ahead to culture and kudos, we help you see how food affects your health. Where uh, Tom is taking charge on potentially updating some of these blurbs and. Um, reassessing whether it completely captures the scope of what levels is up to. So uh, we might add an and lifestyle to the, we help you see how food and lifestyle affects your health, uh, testing that. So in general, um, staying the course with this one for now. And I want to highlight uh, two folks in particular this week. Um, I'm going to start over here on the left. So as JM put it, the blog is not normal. We are, uh, we're seeing just incredible traction and incredible resonance with people. Um, I love this note. This, this really describes uh, initially the hopes and dreams that I think a lot of us felt for putting content out into the world was that someone might one day write a note like Levels has achieved the impossible. They created a must read corporate blog. Um, it is so good. They could, they could productize and sell this content as their next product. That's exactly the type of thing that we want to hear and just really want to shout out to you to Mike, but also to Casey uh, in, you know, for just all the, the really hard work they've put into building a machine that is building the information that will build the levels machine. And then um, another kudos to Lauren. So I just wanna call out Lauren for jumping in feet first on everything. So she's taken on some really big projects very quickly. Um, in particular, the, the IRB that is underway, which is a, a really big project, obviously for activation. Um, taking on some of the weirder experiments that we do in here, like the all video experiment. Like I think that was day one or week one for her and then wrote up a clinical product strategy memo that is, that is really exceptional um, and, and takes all of the principles of what levels wants to do and, and activates them in uh, kind of a future roadmap defining way. So Lauren, thank you for representing what we're trying to build here. Um, really awesome read and looking forward to working together further in the future. And Mike, had a Q4 assemblage update here. I'm just gonna repost it from threads. So we're less than a week away, December 15th to 17th. Uh, clear your calendars. Hopefully you already have, um, looking forward to it. Alrighty, I believe this is Scott. I think Scott's uh, not on the call, but uh, I can jump in for him. So um, Scott and Alan have been heads down uh, this week as well, um, shepherding your, your feedback on the company's product vision and strategy. Um, so thank you so much for participating with that with them. Um, they're going to need a lot more of your, your help with, uh, with input on that over the next week. Um, and they will be continuing to work on that. So it's a bit shorter on the product and end side for, for an update today. Um, at the assemblage, they are going to be um, going through the team's kind of finalized thoughts on that, as Josh alluded to at the beginning of the, of the meeting. But in the meantime, um, we're still focused on membership uh, transition. We're still focused on some of the more experimental things, like blood work. Um, the guided journey, core looping going on um, are the main ones. No big, no big changes this week. We did add a new section at the bottom here, blockers to launch. We just wanted to call out the, the main things that are, are standing in our way. Um, the big one here is uh, scalable data integration. So some of that's underway with the, with the IRB 
and, and whatnot to transition there. And then the completion of the membership uh, of the membership model transition. Um, and I think with the next slide, we'll go more into that. So Josh, as far as the membership model transition. Uh, so we, at the end of last week, we, we submitted our, our app to the Apple App Store um, for review. And that included the new in-app signup for membership. And that was one of the main things that we wanted to get a thorough review from Apple on to make sure that we were all our um, I's dotted and T's crossed. And we were as expected, uh, rejected, but that's um, totally expected. And we, we asked them to do a thorough review and not just rubber stamp us. So they came back and there were five, five areas that we needed to, uh, to, to work on. And we've closed out three of those. Two of them are very close to being uh, finished. Uh, huge thanks to a whole bunch of the team for, for pitching in on how we could respond to that. Um, one of the big ones was just clarifying for Apple that we are not a medical device ourselves. Um, we work with with other uh, with other existing CGMs, things like that, and through OAuth APIs and like how that connection works. So we'll be gearing up to resubmit later today. And if you know this this process can take a couple weeks um, to get through approval. So that's why I put uh, December sixteenth there as the projected date. Uh, fingers crossed, we can keep this moving quickly and have it launched by mid next week. Oh, and then one last thought. We're um, starting to think through the next steps on explaining uh, explaining membership. So uh, we really need to communicate well um, what this membership model means, why, like what the value proposition for, is for, for, for members. And so we're, we're going to be sprinkling communications on that all throughout the like the, the, the website landing pages, in the sign-up flow, uh, on podcasts, things like that. So we're starting to think through what are the actual talking points to deliver on that uh, to that end. Next up. Uh, on the next slide, the health panel survey uh, went out earlier this week to about 46 people who have done it so far and gotten their results in app. We heard back from 59% of them. The NPS was 59, not a mistake. We asked a few different things and I'm gonna kind of review them here quickly. Uh, how is the experience? 4.78 out of five. How is the appointment scheduling experience, which a number of us had problems with, but that was basically okay, 4.96. And the collection experience, 4.93. Uh, we asked a question, how often do you plan to do this again in the future? Uh, and got some good results there, which you can read. Um, some people will do this every, uh, every few months, uh, which is great. We asked now on the right side of the screen, if you would do this by mail, if you'd prefer that, uh, some people would. Um, we asked where people were reviewing the results, either on the, uh, either inside our app or on the Scarlet Health website, I reference. Um, the by reference results piece was interesting because a lot of people did go view them there. Almost all those people also saw them in the levels app. Um, going forward, starting soon, people will not be aware of that alternative uh, spot to see the results, uh, but I was just wondering if people were going there now. The professionalism of the phlebotomist uh, was 100% good. There were no complaints in any of the surveys, uh, which is good. Um, and then the free response section had a few themes. One is more molecules, uh, one was being able to talk to someone about the results, which was an interesting one, about a third of people want that. And better integration in the app, sort of the what now piece, like, okay, I see this result, help me make it better through some kind of app experience. And then on the next slide, just a couple more things, a more kind of normal update. Uh, the progress, Marillo is banging out the end of phase one and a little bit of phase two to get results integration in app in a more smooth and fast way uh, and a promotional widget inside the app. Um, next steps uh, will be turning this on for everybody, getting more folks involved and emailing everyone. Uh, I had some space on the right side of the slide. So a Marillo picture felt like the right thing to put there. And then very small, there was a great interaction between people all over the world in real time. And it gave me the warm and fuzzies. It was the best like remote kind of experience that I've had so far. Um, so thanks to everyone who's working on this. If you have not tried it yet, you ought to. Um, and that's all from the snow globe from me. Have a good weekend. I love it. Thank you, Jan. So fun. Um,
so on the guided looping project, uh, Justin and Steph um, did some great work on getting the demo out into the app. All of the trigger logic was completed. And then uh, this was earlier um, today, you could try this out in the app. There is a bug internally on this that, that Justin's working on. So it's not currently working and we uh, reverted that internally, um, but stay tuned, hopefully in the next uh, day or so, you can test out this um, working with the full with the full logic. We, we still are uh, with the um, with Alan heads down on the product strategy. We're still we're still waiting for some of the final um, final uh, final designs for this. Um, but in the meantime, you can definitely test out what we have. It's totally wired up with the uh, with the insights and um, with your actual score. So, uh, looking forward to your feedback on that. And next slide. That's it. All righty. Um, let's see, quick open roles. So we've got, we've been through this already today, but software engineering, always open, visual product designer, community manager, associate editor, and then our new finance hire. Are, all of these are live. Um, you can go to levels.link slash careers or just make a referral. If you know somebody, if you're interested, uh, reach right out to, to one of us and uh, we'll get you linked into the system. All righty. Uh, new team members. So Right now we've got four folks who, five actually, who have um, joined the team, have not yet gotten started. So here they are, Brittany, Ian, Jeff, Maxine, all with start dates in January. And then everybody kind of knows Taylor. He joined us already for a, um, for a Friday forum. He's semi-active. Uh, He'll be in and out of threads, in and out of email, but he starts full-time on January 1st as well. So five folks who are um, joining us in the new year. There we go. Hey, everybody. Oops. This is my virtual member experience update. Um, I'm not going to be nearly as good. This is JM, so bear with me. On the member insight side, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did the app tracking survey and we had 2,700 open-ended comments across all the different open-ended questions. I uploaded all that into our text analytics tool thematic and did a bunch of analysis, modeling, and permutations, cloud, um, uh, cloud or tag clouds. Um, and hand that over to Alan and David if they want to dive deeper. There's a deck here, um, and also you can get access to the thematic if you need it through one password. Conversion data by partner code. Looking at the weekly data, we had some large swings up and down in our emails, orders, and also drops in conversion rate. And the reason for that is, is very much due to whichever partner is really highlighting us for that week. Um, so what we saw last week was we had a large promotion from Flav City, which drove lots of emails, but very low conversion um, at 2% versus some of our other partners like Mark Hyman or Dave at 13%. So this is causing a lot of the variance that we see in a week to week basis around changes in our shopping cart or conversion cart um, or orders or emails kind of going up and down is where we're being promoted and that audience that they represent and how well they convert. Uh, one surprise on this, I think I noticed the the Verge, which was the article went out, um, was also really high at 14%, which is higher than a lot of us expected. So that's great news. On the support standpoint, two days ago, we had a number of outages. AWS went out um, that caused some of our email newsletters links to, to fail. It caused people um, not be able to sync data, um, which drove over 600 messages to support in a single day. Normally we get about 150. So this was a large influx and the team did a great job to um, automate, create workflows, um, to really be able to address those in a hurry um, and do those in, in bulk versus you know, one at a time. So um, the 600 was a bummer, but how the team handled it and rallied around it was great to see. Um, similarly on support last week, we are back up to 99%. The only um, not negative comment, but the own non great comment was um, someone reached out because for Arizona, but we don't support that. So Arizona kept it from uh, kept us from being at 100%. Um, and that's on this slide. Next, we have a new Snowflake dashboard. Here's the link. It's app versions, a little bit of which versions are currently people on uh, by iOS, which iOS are they using Android or um, iOS, no surprise, 90% of our users are on iOS. And then the kind of distribution over time based upon the last time we saw data from them. Uh, the key, key takeaways, 70% of our members are on the most current version of the app. 
It might vary a little bit depending upon when we release it or how long it's been out there. But just for us to remember as we push new features out that we should probably expect between 65 and 75% of our members will be seeing that right away versus there might be a week, two or three week you know, lag before they see those features. Um, promoter comments, we had quite a few on here today. I'm not really going to go through those. Uh, people are going to read those on their own time. Um, same on the, pa the, the passives in gray and detractors in red. Um, and then with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike D to cover uh, some of the feedback from his member calls. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Try and jump forward. Hey, everybody. Out. Restart. <laughs> um, lo lo love the async updates. Uh, quick, quick one uh, this week. Just want to call out two things um, that we saw um, and they map with some of our um, priorities. One was um, the desire for more uh, guidance or, or maybe structure and the individual called out like our challenges is a great example of this. Um, at the surface, it seems like it, it's really helpful, but then when you get into the experience, it's kind of just like left there and it'd be helpful to have like more prompts or, or guidance around that. And then the second part, um, uh, was, was the desire for more, uh, curation and, and personalization. And, you know, a few members told us, uh, that they'd be open to, and would like to see, um, whether it's more data collection or questions up front to drive that personalized experience. Um, and I think that's it for today. Thank you. All right, Ben. All right, growth. Um, we have a mantra. We're going to test this out. So feedback would be appreciated. The goal of this is very much like levels shows you how food affects your health. Um, so growth, the mantra is growth is focused on providing value through membership. What does this mean other than it being aligned? It's that we're not focused on trying to grow revenue through selling CGMs. And so by having that as a heuristic that we use, um, we're not going to undertake initiatives to say, hey, like BOGO two for one CGMs, that's just never going to be part of our value prop. And then if you extrapolate that to other revenue streams moving forward, that's not the game. That's not the goal. It's we're providing value through membership. So if anyone has thoughts or feedback, if it makes sense and resonates, um, we'll continue to work on it week over week. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, weekly revenue, $104,000. Dollars of recognized revenue, 264 for the month, so a third of the way through, and we're almost at our goal. Uh, Eight million in cash on hand, no changes to debt or runway. Next slide, please. So culture documentation 4.0. Um, this will be not a super long update, but thorough. So stay with me and ask questions after if you have any. Um, we haven't updated this project in a couple of weeks because of Thanksgiving and because last week was our monthly recap. But we had a goal of shipping five videos for this culture 4.0 project and doing so by December 17th. Um, we're on track there. We've shipped four in the left-hand panel. You can see there's the shipped, the in edit and the scheduled for recording videos. Um, we actually ended up doing nine videos. And so I'll get into how this happened and the way we'll think about it moving forward. But what we're going to do is break it down into we've got, and this is where it might be complicated from a semantic standpoint, um, three different ways of doing video. So one is this culture 3.0, and those are the videos that Campbell did. Those are ones where we require team members to have some perspective on something. So we're doing one right now, and there are a number of people involved around the concept of disagree and commit. Um, that video serves very well to multiple people's uh, perspectives and input to make a nice culture video. Um, there are other videos where you can have just two people talking and they don't lend themselves to screen sharing. So that might be something around um, when to meet synchronously and when to meet or when to be asynchronous in communication. There's not a lot of screen sharing to be done, but you don't want to just put out some video of two people talking. And so when that's the case, Tony cuts in different visuals to still support the narrative that is taking place and cuts out um, some of the filler content to make sure that it's as snappy as possible and getting across the points that are needed. And then the last is something like screen sharing as a walkthrough. Uh, Miz and I did one. It was either this week or last week, but we did one recently and it's walking through the ideas of onboarding. So what does it look like to go through our onboarding flow? What's the point of having a checklist? And um, some of it is, uh, is around the idea of productivity or how to, and then the other is like tactically, why do we make these decisions? So we've now bucketed the videos into three different stacks and it's pretty easy to make a decision when we have a new one coming into the pipeline to say, 
the best execution path of that is one, two, or three. Um, so moving forward, what we're going to do to wrap this project up is we'll ship everything by December 17th, but um, we don't want to take on a new suite of let's do five videos because that becomes a bit distracting, like trying to just ship a whole bunch at once. What's really efficient is, and that's how we got to this nine number, is when something relevant comes up that's going to help our team, it's actually very quick to produce them, very easy to have a conversation, get it edited and push it out the door. And so if we do one a week or we do one in three weeks, there's no timeline. It's just about making sure we're shipping them when they come up and to make sure they're helping our team. So that's to wrap on this project. Project. We'll, we'll update it next week to make sure to close the loop on it, but that is an update on it. So let me know if anyone has questions. Great. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Tom. Okay. As a reminder from last week, these are a few focus areas for partnerships between now and end of year, uh, creator outreach, paid placements for 2022 and improving the affiliate program. Next slide. So creator outreach uh, encompasses all platforms, including podcasts and Instagram, but the recent focus has been on YouTube. And these are not just the, the really big names out there, which we're often highlighting on Friday Forum, but also finding more Austin McGuffey's, both across health and wellness channels, as well as tech, science, entrepreneurship. Um, and these relationships can be organic, affiliate, or, or paid. Um, in terms of paid, uh, we're continuing to secure sponsorships with select individuals who we feel are very aligned with our brand and who love our, our product podcast advertising is one example of this. And this week I've been focused a lot on finalizing a deal with Rich Roll. We're in the, the contact contract phase there. So, so finalizing things, which is really exciting. Um, many, many others in the hopper, but here are just a couple new names this week um, who are very interested in using levels and are going to be signing up Ryan Holiday and Dak Shepard. Um, who I imagine many of you know. And again, these conversations are very, very early, but they're just kind of good examples of where we're focused right now. And then lastly, as Jackie spoke about last week, we've been taking stock of where the, the affiliate program kind of currently stands today and then how we want to improve it in 2022, really with an emphasis on uh, better empowering our affiliates to create more and higher quality content. So this is a document that Jackie sent around this week which focuses on best practices and guidelines for creating uh, effective uh, social content. And then next slide. Um, just some other partner content for the week. Uh, Casey and Dave Asprey did an Instagram live. Kelly did a giveaway on Instagram, um, which was really successful. I think most notably, this had three times the engagement than any other giveaway post that she did. And the structure of these posts in terms of like liking and following, commenting were the same for all of these brands. So very good sign. Um, Kelly also introduced me to uh, a few different celebrities this week, um, which I have a feeling came from, from that post. And then a couple of other articles there, Michael Coomer, who's an affiliate, did a super, super deep dive. Uh, that's in threads. I recommend checking it out if you've got an hour or two on your hands and then the bulletproof gift guide down there on the bottom right. That's it. Right. Uh, content. A few good articles went up this week, continuing in our metabolic basics camp. Um, we did a, a piece that surprisingly we didn't already have, which is what is a continuous glucose monitor? It's a little bit of an SEO play um, to, to see if we can get a little juice, a little more juice around that term. We had a piece that uh, had been done a long time ago, which was a pharmacist perspective on CGM, which had some basic info. And we've been using that as kind of our filler for what is a CGM. But it really wasn't optimized for SEO. So we went back to the agency, had them create us a content brief and then wrote this you know, fairly short piece, um, just trying to get out the basics of what this is. And this is now pinned on the homepage um, and also in the Metabolic Basics camp. Um, had an article uh, continuing our, our great relationship with Austin. I had done a, an interview with them quite a while ago for a five questions. So there's some nice stuff in there. Um, and then uh, continuing our eat this instead, our swaps, uh, format. We did one around desserts. Um, and this is really good. There's some really great, delicious stuff in here and some really good principles around how to eat dessert and still get stable blood sugar. So swapping out flour, swapping out sweeteners, that kind of stuff. Um, really nice piece. And want to call out, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we had a good everyone on content piece, get a lot of stuff in the hopper, but Chris, uh, worked with Aaron and came out with a really 
Another great, just interesting things I didn't know about and lots of practical advice kind of piece about basically how to think about analytics and how unique that needs to be for each company and how to make sure that the analytics and the data you're pulling together are actually useful for your company. Um, so we're also going to start um, pushing these pieces out a little bit more on social than we've done in the past. So I think this is something like this can do really well on LinkedIn. Um, a few other things just going on. We have a meeting today for the kickoff of the blog redesign. This has been on a long time, but we we finally landed on an agency we really like, we feel good about, signed the contract. And so that looks like about a 13-week project to, um, that's our target anyway, to get the blog redesign in place. So I'll, I'll be doing a lot more updates on that as we go along. Um, had some really good candidates come in in the last couple of weeks for the associate editor position. Um, I think it's starting to kind of make its way throughout the editor world. Um, and then a bunch of fun pieces coming up. Most of these through our relationship with Revel, our, our content agency, um, foods we love about sardines. We're doing another, if you saw the Chipotle piece, we're doing another one uh, with sweet greens. Um, piece on hearing and metabolic health, which grew out of Casey's podcast with uh, Ben. Um, Casey was really specific about asking some great questions in that podcast with Ben, which helped them inform a, a piece. So it's not just a straight transcript. It's just sort of like um, fodder and fuel for you know one of our deeper dive pieces. Um, another swaps piece on kids' lunches coming up. Uh, next slide. One more with some stats. Uh, end of the month, um, just throwing up some numbers here. The, the kind of TLDR on this is um, it was an interesting month. We didn't have any record weeks, um, but we still had a record month. So we're up to 176,000 page views this week. You can see the growth over the last few months there. Um, and it really was pretty dispersed. Um, direct continues to grow. I still don't entirely know what direct entails. I'm working with the SEO agency to kind of unpack that a little bit. Um, but social was up quite a bit this month um, and email was steady. Uh, I've got down at the bottom, if you can see in those little numbers, I know I did a version of this recently, but these are some stats around, this is our, our newsletter metrics tracker. What's interesting about this is that we've had, I think really good success on engagement with some of our, both our traditional digest newsletters, but also our other ones we've talked about great, Dr. Casey's newsletter uh, is doing, um, but also the, the levels company updates. Both of those have very low click-through rates. And so we're not always seeing the huge traffic bump from those newsletters, but we're seeing engagement with the newsletter. And it's a good reminder for me that really the goal, just like on social, we talked about recently with Stacy, the goal is not necessarily always traffic to the blog. It's engagement with the content. It's our people learning things. And if they're learning things without clicking, great. Um, that's still a win. Um, the last thing I'll, I'll call out just in the lower right corner there, I just did a another check-in on like since the beginning of time. Um, and uh, the one that was kind of cool there to see was page views is like 4.6 million page views. This is site overall um, since I think January, 2020. So just kind of cool to, to see that number continue to grow. And that's it for content. Amazing. Yeah, 4.6 million. That's a big number. It's hard to conceive of. Um, pretty amazing. Thank you. All right, we ripped through this one. The week after we said the, the forum was going to be 90 minutes, we are having a 40 minute forum here. So um, let's jump right into it. I don't think Kanal is with us. Kanal, if you are, please correct me and jump in. All right, um, Shinlu. All right, we got a, got a short roster here. Uh, Stacy. Um, I thought it was really exciting to see the growth on um, blog traffic this week. Um, and then on the personal side, um, we had our Christmas party on Saturday night canceled because someone has COVID. So I'm not, not ours that we're hosting, but somebody else's that we were going to. So I'm actually not sure. We have an open weekend. Lots of possibility, I suppose. Those are often the best. Um, enjoy. Gabriel, I, I saw you are on the call. You want to jump in? All right, we'll jump to Steph. Uh, this week was, it was fun to kind of jump into other things outside of software development. And so working with Ben and also Campbell on podcasts and culture documentation. And personally, oh, well, also this is professional and personal, but uh, the fast this week with everyone involved is super fun. And I think that, I don't know about fun, but uh, rewarding and definitely speaks to the power of accountability. And so thank you for everyone that participated in that and shout out to Justin for organizing it. And personally, I moved to Colorado last weekend and it just snowed yesterday and I'm in absolute heaven. And so I'm excited to play outside this weekend. Awesome. Congrats. Mike D. Um, yeah. 
there's too much, but I guess like the highlight was the, uh, at least for me, was the generalist uh, piece. Super cool. Um, got a bunch of messages. So just amazing to see that out there. Um, I guess also levels related would be the, the fast. Um, super fun, super cool to do with everyone. It was my first fast. Um, so I really appreciate it, especially uh, Justin and you know JM for, for getting that started. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, I, I uh, came out really quick, quick trip to see some family out in Southern California. Uh, so I was super excited to see my sister, my kids. Um, also, fun fact, levels related. Last night, she told me she was out with friends and went to get Thai food. And they said, you're not eating rice. She said, my brother's in town. It's different when he's here. I want, I want that to be levels constant rather than Mike when he's dropping in. <laughs> but we'll take what we can get, I guess. Jackie. Uh, that's awesome. That's really funny. Um, highlight for my week was getting to see some of the New York crew in person. Um, we got lunch, me, Casey, Tom, Helena, Tony. So that was fun yesterday. Um, and then, um, personal, um, I am going out to LA tomorrow. So I'm excited to see the sun and be in a little slightly warmer weather. Although I checked the weather, it looks like it's not going to be like hot. It's like in the fifties, but still better than, than New York. Awesome. Yeah. Enjoy. Uh, John. Levels wise, I'm excited because we are very close to having some initial end to end tests for the mobile application. They are going to be integrated into our continuous integration pipeline and they will run automatically on the cloud on the cloud. So that means uh, less time for, from David or from people in the mobile team or in other teams, manually testing every single flow, every single time we push a new version. Uh, this will improve our confidence and the quality of what we push to, to our members. And personally, I'm excited because I got to the finals in a local tennis tournament. The final match is going to be next Tuesday, so wish me luck. Good luck. That's awesome. Keep us posted. Rob. <laughs> um, I don't know if you, any of you saw it. But, um, it's not like Newsweek hits the newsstands anymore, but it's online. Uh, go to Newsweek Toxic Food, and there is a cover story uh, with about nine, uh, you know, shall we say, uh, well-known physicians talking about the metabolic aspects of ultra-processed food. Um, we should definitely link to that and post it. Uh, it. It's very worthwhile. It's got a lot of, you know, uh, big names in it. David Ludwig, Darius Mozaffari, and I'm in there, you know, Nicole Avina. It, it, it's, it's worthwhile, and I think it'll help uh, people understand. The other thing that I'm really excited about is I keep getting contacted by groups who want to include metabolic health in their webinars on different topics, like, for instance, chronic pain and metabolic health, immune resilience and metabolic health. You know, these are, you know, so, so it's starting to reach the, um, uh, you know, people, shall we say, not in the metabolic field that metabolic health makes a a difference. So uh, this is a uh, this is a um, a good sign. And from a personal standpoint, I am looking forward to Thursday when Casey and I are going to do a podcast on um, uh, interpreting lab tests, which uh, hopefully will provide some you know shall we say good content for the Christmas holiday. Fantastic update! Looking forward to that podcast for sure. Also, I listened to the uh, Speak to the Ventriloquist, not the Dummy. Uh, oh, YouTube yeah. That you sent uh, out. Yeah, no, everybody needs to go listen to that. Um, it's, a, it's called 10 Lessons. Uh, it took me 50 years to learn. It's a podcast uh, I did this past week. And um, yeah, I'm kind of proud of it, I, I, I have to say. Uh, I think everybody should, uh, uh, you know, it was the first time I've been tapped for my wisdom, not my knowledge. <laughs> That's what I loved about it. It was, it was cool, to, cool to hear that perspective from a, a, a very respectable career. So it was awesome. Thank you. Maz, Maz, sorry. Hey, Josh. Uh, I think you have me twice, but I'll go here. Um, I am for work from, I'm excited about the product strategy work that Alan and Scott are leading. I think there's some really great ideas that's come from the team. It's really fantastic to see that. 
and I got the lab uh, panel at home. It was a really cool experience. I spent probably 20 minutes uh, interviewing the phlebotomist. Uh, she was fantastic, answered all the questions. Um, and on the personal front, uh, my family went to the UK after three years of not being able to because of COVID. And I was super excited for them, especially my wife that hasn't seen the family for three years. So super cool. Wow, that's great. Haney. Uh, on the work front, um, I know I've said this before, but it, it remains to be true. I had a couple of great chats this week with with folks connected with both Josh and with Ben, and and it always um, always just brightens the week. And I always take something out of it and learn something when we get to have these synchronous conversations. Um, on the personal side, I think I'm going to try to take my kid out ice skating uh, on the beach at Coronado. They put up like a really cool rink out in front of Hotel Coronado. Um, so if it is actually sunny and pretty this weekend, it's like just a really super weird SoCal thing to do. So that's awesome. I, I gotta see that. Um, I love ice skating, but I've never done it on the beach. All right. Alan. Um, professional side, you know, I, I could talk about strategy stuff, although I'm trying to keep that on, on wraps for a bigger reveal later, but I think, you know, one thing that's really picked up this week, which has been very encouraging, is I'm getting absolutely hammered now by designers looking for jobs at levels. And so there was a bit of a lag. I was starting to feel um, self-conscious. I was like, how come I can't find a designer? And now it's like uh, there's lots of really promising candidates. I'm getting pinged more often on Twitter about this too. So um, really optimistic about that. Uh, oh, what changed, Tom? Uh, Sam just emailed everybody. <laughs> He hit up the uh, wait list and uh, one, every couple of days I wake up to like 25 emails and all of a sudden um, now I've got, you know, this, this pipeline developing. On the personal side, I'm solo with the kids for 10 more days before we move to New York. So um, that's more of a complaint than a highlight, <laughs> but everything's going great. So that's it for me. Good luck and glad to hear about the pipeline. Uh, Zach. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, on the, on the levels front, I mean, I think the two things that I'm kind of most excited about now is, uh, that, that tweet that, uh, Josh referenced earlier about, um, our, uh, amazing content just makes me so happy. I mean, our, our content really is excellent. It really is, um, a stellar product in and of itself. And it, it's just, it's just so cool to see other people, um, surface that. I'm also really excited about all of the work that uh, Lauren has put in. It's so impressive that she has ramped up this quickly and contributed so much, especially in the um, IRB and clinical spaces. Um, I'm just super excited to work with her. It's been awesome uh, to see her just uh, like learn everything like in days. Um, personal front, uh, things are going good. Uh, baby's good. Still super excited about Christmas. So most of my spare time is doing that. Also got my booster late yesterday. So I'm anticipating kind of getting my butt kicked here in the next couple of hours, but I'm excited to have that too. Well, keep us posted on how that goes. I've heard varying results. Tom. So many things. Um, I'll go with the metabolic panel uh, that I did this week, which was an interesting experience for me because I have never really cared about blood results. And I think the reason is that I've never known how to interpret them. And I've been frustrated by the fact that the doctor will highlight something and then I'll Google it for four hours and I'll find 20 different conflicting pieces of information around it. And obviously what's changed is that now I genuinely like trust levels, Casey, our advisors, and I'm so excited to get my results. And even just in the last week, having talked to friends about it, everyone's now asking if they can send me their blood results so that I can interpret them with our framework. And I just want to tell them to like upload it to the Levels app. So um, yeah, I've, do I've done a 180 personally on like how valuable I think this is and how much traction I think we're going to get. So that's been really exciting for me. Um, and then, yeah, personally, just uh, I've been running around a lot, had a really busy social weekend wedding last weekend. So I'm excited between now and the end of the year to just exercise and read and eat healthy and relax. I love it. Um, glad that we're, we're creating converts on the, on the team about this blood work stuff. I, I personally am so stoked to get my blood work every time. Uh, Chris? No, he's not with us. Um, Lauren? 
Yes. Um, well, I agree with everybody else's excitement. I had a really interesting conversation. I was talking to a um, doctor friend who deals with PCOS patients. And I said, I was wearing a CGM and she said, oh, is it levels? And I thought that was pretty cool. She knew us by name. Um, and she said like, you know, we really want to do a study and all this stuff. So um, yeah, we're definitely out there in the physician community, even with specific conditions, which I think is super cool. Um, really excited to meet people in person next week. And I found an apartment, so I cannot be in a construction zone, which is like super exciting from a work from home situation. Awesome. Good luck with the move in advance. How? Yep. Plus one to Chris dashboard is really amazing. And, uh, I'm going to look into, uh, create some for the food logging stuff. Um, and personally, I'm going to ski this weekend on, uh, on Sunday. It's still early season condition. We'll see. Love it. Uh, me. Okay. Um, this was a really cool week. I think the, uh, the progress on just seeing the, the reaction to the metabolic panel from the early users was awesome. Real, I think, validation that we're heading in the right direction, even with a very, you know, sophisticated, but clunky solution. It's not, it's not clear that it's all levels provided and things like that. I was worried that it might break down the experience, but, uh, just seeing that people were the, the majority of the people were willing to do this twice or more per year was huge. I mean, that's just awesome. So, uh, I think we can get that Tom 180 degree, uh, response for the general population when we make this thing really, uh, VIP quality. And then, uh, have been very excited to be chatting with teams working on you know, thinking about the future of biosensing. So that's it. Oh, personally, see, I haven't been running because I did that marathon. I started doing kettlebells again and I'm just like miserably sore everywhere. And uh, hopefully that will go away at some point. Helena. Yeah. So um, levels wise, I'm really excited about so many things, um, but um, I've made a lot of progress on guided insights and next week I'm starting work with Casey on what I'm calling the levels data story, um, which is just really digging into our data set and picking out what's going to be, you know, like most compelling and actionable for our members and potential members. Um, and, you know, just like curating all that into a story or multiple stories that, that are going to showcase the power of the levels data set. Um, so that's like, the big thing I'm really excited about, but expect a more formal data science update coming. Uh, I know it's been a while since since I've shared in, in the forum here. Um, and then on a personal note, New York is way too cold for me and I'm scoping out my next vacation. So if anyone has any recommendations, um, I'm willing to fly anywhere warm and preferably with a beach. <laughs> I think, I think Haney's got some ice skating on the beach going, so you might want to join him. Tony. Yeah, professionally and personally, it was great seeing some of the NYC crew yesterday and having lunch. That was great. Um, personally, I'll be looking for Christmas trees this weekend, so that should be fun. <laughs> Good luck. I heard there was, a, uh, there was a Christmas tree supply chain crisis in the local area, so hopefully it's better than here. <laughs> Uh, Justin, uh, doing the group fasting was super fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to assemblage and the book club next week. And, uh, personally, my dog just got neutered and he hates his cone so much. He's like destroyed parts of it already. So I've had to get like some bitter apple spray and it's calming down a bit. So it'll be fighting him for the next, like what, two weeks. It'll be fun. Good luck. Ben. Uh, plus one to the fasting. That was a very cool experience to do and to do it with a number of people together. Um, the Mario piece was also neat just from being a huge fan of Mario. And then all of a sudden seeing it, it was just one of the, it's, it felt sort of like the acquired thing where you're like, wait, this is something I'm a fan of, but now it's about this team. So anyway, it's very cool. Um, and then hat tip to Chris Jones, just for all the op stacks that he does every week, there's so much value in them. And I look forward to it when, when it comes out, uh, personally, um, tonight, Pam and I are going for dinner with my best friend's parents. And it's something that we do an annual holiday dinner and we've been doing it for more than 10 years. And it's like one of my favorite things of the year. So super, super stoked for that. Nice. Enjoy. Jan. 
Uh, on the personal front, I'm really glad that um, Hanukkah is over. Um, it's hard, man. Supply chain issues are real. Two kids, eight nights. I'm ready for some not Hanukkah. Really, any uh, you know any other holiday will do. Uh, on the work front. Things are going well. One more big week until break. And uh, we've got a lot done this year. And, uh, you know, that's it. Let's go. It's a great update. Thank you, Jam. Ms. Keep a smile on my face after every time. Um, on the work side, I think uh, just reminding myself this week how great everyone on the team is in terms of ownership and focus and execution. Um, I can't even name everyone because it, it's, it's literally everyone, but a few that do come to mind. Chris on, on member insights and the dashboards and just the focus and care to quality there. Um, David driving through the app store, Alan and Scott on product strategy. Um, Matt's been getting involved in a lot of support improvements, onboarding improvements. Uh, and then JM on, on snow globes. <laughs> uh, was just the meetings and the progress there is, is really meaningful. And it's nice to have such clear owners on all of that, um, just executing nicely. Uh, shout out to Mike for help on organizing the assemblage. There's a, it's a big lift there. There's a lot of of ankle biters and uh, it's been great having him on board for that and looking forward to that next week. And then on the personal side, um, hosting a holiday party this weekend that we do annually with our neighbors. So it's kind of like a three open house thing. So seeing a bunch of friends and, and uh, even some levels people, hopefully. Uh, so looking forward to that. And I got this book called Out of Office that dropped today. Um, it's disappearing to the background uh, by two great authors. I like kind of about the, uh, the remote work you know, migration and change from COVID. It's always interesting reading these books because we're so ahead of the curve on all of it, uh, but that makes it interesting and exciting. And I'm sure there's some, some useful things to pick up. So that's it. Love it. Um, <clears throat> we'll let Maz off the hook for his second update and we can go ahead and wrap here. So uh, great week, filled the full hour, didn't go 90 minutes, but that's why we have, uh, that's why we have cafe chats. So we'll do that right after this. Thanks everybody. Um, approaching the end of this year's forums, which is crazy. I think next week might be the last one. All right. Talk to y'all soon.